Welcome to Backyard Science. My name is Marilyn. I work at the Marina Branch at the Monterey County Free Libraries and generally I do preschool story time. But today we are going to have some more fun with flowers. It's been about two months since our last flower video, so I thought it would be fun to revisit some of the plants we looked at then and see how they look two months on since spring has been progressing. So today we will explore some flowers and seeds and then gather the seeds to cut them open to see what they look like. The first plant I wanted to look at is a succulent from last week. So ooh, we have this beautiful magenta flower and it looked more like this bud last week. But this week it has opened up into this lovely flower and it has started to more have started to bud and this is what the base of the plant looks like. It's looking a little withery so we may have to water it a teeny bit. Now we will check on the nectarine tree. Now ours actually has a little bit of leaf curl, actually a lot of bit of leaf curl. So I think we actually need to find an environmentally friendly method to treat the leaf curl. But for now, we can look and find a nectarine fruit. And so this was a flower and then it ha is developing into a nectarine with a seed in the middle. And that's how the tree would reproduce. But we will pick this nectarine in its kind of developing stages and then cut it open and see what it looks like. There we go. You can see this one is pretty hard, um, unlike a ripe nectarine that you would eat. Here is the rosebush coming over from the neighbor's yard. You can see the yellow flowers and then those orange, um, they're about this size, almost like little mini tomatoes are the rose hips that form under the flower. So let's see if you look is you can kind of see the green rose hip forming under the flower as it dies. And then there's... Looks like it doesn't always form the rose hip. There are some more forming over there too. You can see the flower and then to the right of it you can see under all those flowers, the dead flowers. Yep. Now we'll look at our lemon tree. Uh, last time there were no flowers on the lemon tree, just lemons. But today I found some buds. So we'll take a look at the different stages. Here. Here is a flower before it opens up. So my lemon, you can see that it is purple, or purple below the white. Here is a lemon blossom. It's opening up. And then here is when you can see, kind of in the same stage that the rose hip was in, that the flower is below. The lemon is forming the flower fades away. So lemons are self-pollinating. At least these ones are. So you can see that they are able to pollinate themselves. Here are small unripe lemons that you probably don't want to eat. And there is the mature fruit. You can see they are pretty big right now. Magnolias, like the one with that big flower behind me, are a kind of evergreen tree. They actually evolved before bumblebees did. So millions and millions of years ago, before bumblebees existed, magnolia trees 
evolved so that beetles would pollinate them. So they have big, strong carpels that can withstand, you know, clumsy beetles walking around on them instead of, you know, light and nimble bumblebees. So you can see how big the flower is in comparison with my hand. And so there are quite a few species in that genus, but they're all ancient and they have been around for a really long time. Here is the bud before the flower opens up here. And here's one even before the bud forms. You can see it has a really interesting kind of fuzzy uh, outside to it. And the same way you can see the fuzzy part here too. So if you have a magnolia, make sure you pet it. And then here is the seed pod, which is quite hard. It's almost like a pine cone, but I'm going to break it off and we're gonna see what's inside. Whoa. Interesting. You can see how big it is in comparison with my hand. So now to examine the various fruits and seeds that we have gathered today, you will need a knife. I have a big knife just in case and some scissors that you can use to collect the things if you need. I have a cutting board. Uh, you, can, you should also have an adult or older sibling to help you to, in case you need to cut into anything sharp, use anything sharp. Um, and then you will need some seed pods or fruit to cut so you can look at the seeds inside. So I have magnolia seed pods in two kind of stages. This is the one we collected. You can see it's a little more open. So I don't know if there are actually any more seeds in there. And then this one is hasn't opened all the way yet. Then we have our little baby nectarine that we collected. That's still small and hard. Definitely not ripe and ready to eat. And I also brought, I got two lemons as well. I have a little, another little tiny baby lemon. That's pretty hard. And then I have like a bigger one, one that you might eat. And so we'll cut into both of those and see what we see. Oh, and I also have this rose hip. Um, so you can get whatever seeds or fruit that you have in your yard or that you buy and give it a shot. So let's see, let's start with the, let's start with the magnolia seeds. I am curious about this because I these seeds that you can see kind of like where the little seeds would have sat in those holes. So let's see if there's any, if we can see any seeds in this seed pod. Oh, it just closed. Oops. Hmm. There we go. So it's almost like a pine cone. Pull those. very carefully to make sure the knife isn't pointed towards you. You can see. Actually, I wonder if this little tiny baby seed, there's a little tiny speck inside this, I think might actually be the seed, which is interesting. So it might not have developed totally, if you can see. The outside is free. Which is very interesting. Oh yeah, see here are the little seed. I think those are the little seeds, the little tiny bits. So I'll have to pay attention to see if other has it developed. Yep, so 
Well, there's the older one that's opened a little more, and this is a younger seed pod, I believe. So, next here, let's do our little nectarine. I actually, actually cut open the other one without filming it, so here's kind of the aftermath, but I'll show you cutting this one. So this one, there we go. You can tell it's a little, it's a little bit of a blemish on that. So very carefully, whoops, very carefully cut into it. And you can see what will become the pit. If you have ever eaten a peach or a nectarine, you know that it has kind of a gnarly large seed, which is very cool. And actually, I wonder if this one is forming well. Here's one that I think was a little further along when I cut into it, and you can really see the seed there. That one, that one was a little bigger, like that, versus the smaller one. So, you can see will become the pit and we use nectarines. I'll show you. Okay, now let's try the rose hip. Rose hips you can make jelly out of. You can, it actually has a lot of health benefits. You can make tea. But yeah, this is the seed on a rose. So there it is before. And And very carefully making sure my fingers are away from the knife. Ooh. Cool, I've never actually seen the inside of a rose hip before. There is that. So here are the seeds, and then here is the fruit part. Yep. I'll try to make some tea. Okay, so now I'll do the lemons. Here is the smaller one. Again, very carefully making sure my fingers are out of the way of the knife. Woo! You can see a little bit of the seed, but see that it's almost all pith and no, none of the yummy juicy fruit part yet. Well, only a very small part of it. I'll do the bigger one too. Probably you've seen a lemon, but it's always good to do half this way. It has really cool segments. You can see the seeds in the middle, and we'll cut it this way too. You can see the pith that shields each individual segment. There's our close up of our young lemon that is very unripe and green on the outside so of the rose hip oops there are the rose seeds that one half you can see how they sit in the hip itself and then there is the mature lemon that is ready to eat so you can see the seeds in this segment Oops. That is like that. Yep. Here's the magnolia ones. Here's the baby nectarines. Two of them. The rose hips. <laughs> well, that concludes this week's episode of Backyard Science. I hope you had fun learning about all of the different ways that plants reproduce with their flowers and seeds. We saw a lot of really cool variation between the magnolia seed pods and the lemon seeds and the nectarines and even the rose hips. So I hope that you are inspired to go explore in your own backyard and record what you find. Don't forget to check out you, the webcams from gardens all over the world. There are all kinds of neat plants out there. Have fun, be safe, and see you next week. Bye!